Hi guys and welcome to this week's Alakazam video blog. Harry! You alright? Yeah, good, thank you buds. You alright? Yeah, pretty darn good. Excellent. Pretty good, right? It has been a stonkingly busy week this it last week. It has indeed. Uh, yeah, lots and lots going on. Uh, we had uh, the Murphy's sale, which mm. was running. Um, now isn't running, that's now finished. Uh, but lots of people took advantage of the crazy, crazy offers that were on crazy items. Crazy offers. Crazy right. offers. Proper, proper. Like thousands and thousands of items that were reduced mm. by up to 80%, I think. I think you could probably, the duration that that sale was on, you probably spent that long flicking through everything that was on <laughs> yeah. sale. Honestly, yeah. there was like 15 pages or something, weren't there? Yeah, there, was a, there was a lot. But you guys, Guys uh, out there took advantage of that, um, so you have now a load of goodies that are either on their way to you or coming uh, this week. Yeah. Um, so that's all good. We've had um, some uh, review team items uh, that have gone out to the lucky few. Been slapping the stickers on the invoices. If you know, you know. Yeah, so uh, that's all very exciting. And uh, new things that we've been making up as well. We've been busy putting together components for, for new tricks that are going to yeah. be coming out. First batch of Envision sold out. <laughs> yeah, within two hours. Yeah. That is crazy. just crazy. It yeah. was bonkers. Um, and we're not sure when the next batch is going to be no, here. No, so just to let you know, they're all handmade. Mm. Um, at the moment, um, we've been given an estimate of about four to five weeks, but that can change. Uh, so yeah. that's not a definite uh, definite time scale uh, because they're all handmade. Uh, the guy that makes them for us is extremely busy. Um, so mm. um, if you haven't ordered already, um, then um, put your name down. There is a little button on Envision that says notify yeah. me when back in stock. So click on that, uh, fill in the details and let you, let on, you know when that's back in stock. And I don't want to hear, why don't you just go with someone else? Because we want, only want the best quality, as you know, right? Yeah. And if you manage to get your hands on one, you'll see the quality of the coins. Aren't they ridiculously yeah. good? Yeah, uh, we we have uh, we have a, a coin engineer uh, who is amazing. Mm. Um, he he truly is amazing. And sometimes you you know you want quality quality. You have to wait for for that to happen. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and he does take his time over it. If he's not happy with the end result, then he just doesn't send them. So. Yeah. We want everything to be perfect for you um, so that you get the most out of it and you enjoy using them. Mm. And that means waiting, unfortunately. Yeah, but it's worth the wait, honestly. I'm picking, I didn't even get one in the first batch. We even sold our bloody demo copy. Yeah, yeah, which was very frustrating because I didn't get one as well. Well, we've called dibs on the next batch already. Yeah, so, well, I'm putting rank actually oh. over you. Seriously? Can I do that? I don't know if I can do that as a boss's son. Can I do that? Hang on a second. No? <laughs> no, but yeah, no, we're definitely getting sure, one next well, I'm time. sure we'll probably get one yeah. at the same time. It's, yeah. They're really, honestly, they're, it's a great product. Um, and there's a lot more you can do with it as well than the first routine. Yeah. You so if you yeah. haven't seen it already, check out Envision, which is on the site. Mm -hmm. You'll get to uh, check out the trailer uh, and click the notify me when back in stop button. Sweet. So what should we talk about first? So mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about um, Steve Wood. Yes. Yeah, okay, so Steve Wood uh, contacted me uh, when I was on holiday a few weeks back mm -hmm. and said, can you have a look at, would you like to stock my effect counterintelligence, oh. uh, which was released and sold out at Mines. And I said, ah, yeah, okay, um, I'll try and have a look at it while I was on holiday. Um, and uh, I didn't get a, a chance to have a look at it because the signal in France was rubbish. And so I said to him, you know, if I don't get a chance, send it to Peter as well, yeah. let him have a look at it, see what he thinks. Well, Peter obviously loved it yep. because it went up on the site and it sold out uh, in a crazy amount of time as well. Um, so that was that was all very cool. And I know you guys out there, you've, you've seen Counter Intelligence now um, and it, it's still doing well. It's still selling yeah. you know, really, really well for us. Uh, so he approached us also, he approached Peter about loss for words, uh, which is a word prediction. Ooh. Okay, now I'll be totally honest. I haven't got round to seeing this as well, um, but if it's anything like the quality of what counterintelligence was like, yeah. then I know it's going to be a winner. Um, so before we go any further, let's take a look at the trailer for Lost for Words. Over 16 years ago at a late night jam session, I invented a new utility principle that could be applied within mentalism. And ever since that time, I've been searching for the perfect trick to use it for. I've been through lots of different tricks along the way, but I never quite felt as if I'd found the one that rounded it off properly. Until now. My name is Steve Wood, and this 
is lost for words. Steve's recently shown me his lost for words and I was literally lost for words. Get some highest recommendation. You've got to get it or you're going to be fooled with it. With Lost for Words, you will start by showing the spectator a large set of business cards, each of which has a random word written across its face by spectators in previous performances. A random group of cards is selected and the spectator can even add in some of their own words. So what word have you got there? You've got people as your first word, that's fantastic. The cards in that group are mixed and counted and then handed to the spectator and never touched again by the performer. Okay, I'd like you to hold out your hand for me, please. And I'm just going to pop those in there. Put your other hand on top. The spectator freely thinks of a number within that group and then counts to that number to arrive at a random word. This time, you've got the chance to either stay with the number that you've now got in your mind or change it one last time. The decision is yours. Uh, and then when you've finally decided, you can tell us in a nice loud voice that the camera can hear which number you've decided to choose. Number four. Number four. That's the fourth card there, yeah? Have a sneaky little look at it, but don't show me all the camera. And then just pop it face down there for a moment. The spectator puts that word aside and then checks the remaining words to verify that they have a selection of different lengths and no word is repeated. And also that the words that you've got on those cards are of different lengths. There's some long words, there's some really short words as well, yeah? Okay. Right, you are then able to announce that you knew in advance the number of letters that the chosen word would have. In fact, when the prediction, which has been on the table in full view the whole time, is opened, you can show that you predicted the actual word itself. The prediction cards are also numbered to show that they could only ever be in that order. But I knew that your word would have seven letters. In fact, so convinced was I that your word would have seven letters and that, and that that's the only way this could possibly have worked, that I numbered them. See, this is seven. Can you just tell us for the first time what your word was? Blasted. Well, not only did I know that your word would have seven letters, but I also knew exactly which word you were going to choose. And I was so convinced of that, that I numbered them in order from one to seven, so they could only ever come out in that order. Your spectators will be lost for words. And I'm absolutely lost for words. That's the trailer for Lost for Words. Um, as you can see, it was, it was you know, unlike other trailers, you know, it's, it's kind of there, um, it's very uh, relaxed, very chilled mm. out, um, and there's some testimonials on, on there as well, just point that out a little bit further down the page, uh, the product page for uh, Lost for Words, there's some testimonials from uh, working performers that use it mm. um, and love it, obviously. Um, Steve, I think he, you know, he's appeared at Minds a couple of times, and I know he attends that regularly. And I, I think that he's going to be, uh, you know, a, a creative force mm -hmm. to watch out for. Um, not possibly as well known as some people, yeah. um, but uh, I think that's all about to change. Certainly with counterintelligence and certainly with lost yeah. words. We, yeah, I've seen the packaging of counterintelligence more than I've seen the packaging for anything else. That <laughs> I would yeah. say, apart from Envision. Yeah, that's because you've been packing stuff up. Honestly, you can see them flying out the door. Non-stop. It's like a conveyor belt. Mm. Literally, uh, Dave will stand by the by the cabinet that's got counterintelligence and uh, and envision in it. I will stand in the middle, and Harry will be in the <laughs> post room, and it just sort of like gets thrown <laughs> through, like bang, passed along, bang, bang. and uh, like a conveyor belt. Mm. Um, but no, this looks um, this looks really good. I'm sure he's going to do amaze balls. But yeah, and and as well, check out the reviews if you're. Um, if you're thinking about getting this, check out the reviews for Counterintelligence and you'll see the reviews that that got. Yeah. And it's by the same creator, so obviously you know it's going to be just as good. Yeah. And also, uh, there's some reviews that I believe have started going up for Lost for Words as well. This oh, is a they? fairly new product. Yeah, this okay. is a fairly new product. So obviously people are still getting these coming yeah. through. But Harry raises a good point. Uh, reviews are brilliant, you know, and we always encourage people to review stuff, uh, to send in reviews, post it underneath the product. It's great that you email them into us. We love that. We love the feedback and we appreciate it loads 
but we can't post that on your behalf. Mm. So if you want to put a review up, then please post it underneath the product. If you scroll right to the very bottom, it says write a review, just click on that, write your review and uh, submit it. Lovely. But it always helps because yeah. although we're here and we're saying this is what we think and this is what we love and this is what we don't particularly get on with, etc., etc., etc. The review, the, the proof of the pudding yeah. comes from the people that use it, have brought it, um, and have played around with it. Um, so check them out. Mm. Yeah. Thousand million percent agree with what you just said. Good, um, I'm glad. Thanks. But that was Lost for Words by uh, Steve Wood. Make sure you check it out. Um, how, you, have we got a decent amount of these? Uh, we do still currently have a decent amount of these. Okay. Uh, Steve's been really good with sending through stock when we run out, um, so I don't think there'll be an issue there. But. Uh, it is in a limited run for what we currently have. Yeah. Um, so get in quick. Don't be disappointed. Um, I don't want you to be disappointed, mm. sorry, if we run out of these and if we are waiting. Um, so check it out on our site now. Bang. Does that look my face? Yeah, that's good. Lots of words. Yeah. Right. Uh, beautiful. So should we now talk about the uh, challenge? Oh, okay. So uh, let's go to the Andy versus Harry challenge. <laughs> Do you know what? I'm happy. I'm you happy. are. I'm sure you are. I'm I sure you are. The, I picked this week's one. Okay. Yeah, you did pick this week's one. Um, um, so this is from David Minton. Right. And uh, this was magic that you would do f- uh, at a wedding or couples at a, a wedding. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, I've, I've got some thoughts on that. Mm. And uh, I'm sure you've probably got some thoughts on it as well. Yeah. Can I just quickly do a, a little side one? Yes. Um, I also really like, there's an effect by Jamie Dawes, um, forgot what it's called though, uh, on the cards or date night. Written in the cards. Written in the cards, that's what it is. Um, and it's really, really, really good. Uh, it's so simple, but it gets a great reaction. Right. Um, and basically it's like a little, seems like a cutout from you would get from a magazine or something. Um, and it's got, it, like... You know on Facebook sometimes you do like a test to see, oh, does your crush like you? You know like when you're yeah. younger you do all those things, right? Yeah. Um, it's basically something like that and it's to tell if two people are compatible with each other. Um, and then basically you go through a whole list. So they pick two cards, uh, you go through a whole thing um, and it's like, oh, if your colours match then you're this percent match together. If the suits match as well then you're this much. If you get matching pairs or mates um, and it's like, uh, two and two of diamonds, two of hearts, and you're perfect for each other. Um, then you work well with each other. Sorry, um, and then when they turn their card, cards over, theirs don't match. They've got like a king and an eight or something. But then when you turn it over, it's like and true love is the king and the eight. Nice. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. I, I said it quite long winded, but it's easy, straight to the point, and it is wicked. Cool. So um, your choice this week. Mm. What was your choice this week? Because I know that yours is going to. Well, I say I know that yours is going going to be. Um, I think that you've taken a slightly different um, stance to what I would possibly take. However, I think that there is um, a couple of similarities as well. Mm. Um, so talk us through what what you chose. So I went for a um, invisible touchy type thing, a PK touch. Right routine. Okay. Um, and I really, really enjoy this because uh, you can do it off the cuff. You don't need anything with you. Um, although something's just been released that's really good that you will need something with you. Yeah. Um, okay. We can talk about that later. We can. Um, but yeah, I went for a PK touchy type routine, and I have got a video of me performing it. Um, I know it was to some contestants from BGT. Right. Um, a nice little dance group and. I just think it gets amazing reactions and you it allows you to do the, the whole warm up thing, do you know what I mean? Guys, I feel like you two have got connection. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, and it works well so you can do it with couples or brothers and sisters or mates, do you know what I mean? Right, okay. So before we talk any more mm. about that, um, let's have a look at uh, Harry's performance um, mm. of the PK touch routine. Alright, keep your eyes closed. Did you feel a touch? Yeah. No. <laughs> Can you just hold up on your hand how many times you felt the touch using your finger? <laughs> and now can you just point to where you felt it? Alright, you can open your eyes. <laughs> Wow, 
that's brilliant, mate. That's Thanks. really, really good. It is. Uh, it's again. That is uh, kind of a, a simple one. That was a simple Banachay routine, I think. Right. Um, but yeah, as I said, the reactions are incredible, and you can see the distance between me and the girl. Do you know what I mean? So. When people are recording it, and bearing in mind there's people watching from all angles, there's people standing behind the girl, in yeah. front of the girl, beside the girl. It's so simple and it is so powerful, it's unreal. And it's a great way to get everyone involved, but yet make them two feel extra special. Okay, so um, um, for anybody wanting to learn a PK touch mm. routine, what advice would you have? Um, I would say, Jamie Dawes done a bit on this academy. Yeah. Um, tackling terrifying taboo, so check that out. Um, but I would say it's quite ballsy, right? But it's all to do with your uh, script. Yeah. So um, the method is so simple, but it is all to do with the wording. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I would just focus on the wording the most. I would say. Right. It's, and get trying to get the feel in where you do feel like a, a strong connection between each other. So get them to put their hands together. Get them to. Um, like condition them, touch them at the same time so everyone sees. Do you know what I mean? It it just adds to the effect. But that's not what I've got here. No. Because this is a step onwards, which I'm currently learning at the minute. Right, okay. But Jamie Dawes does this. Yeah. As you know, he does spooky, spooky ass magic. Yeah. Right? Jamie Dawes does this and it's incredible. If you're at a restaurant, yeah, with Jamie, ask him to do it and literally the you'll see the whole restaurant turn around and they're like yeah. They don't even hear what's going on, but you can just see it, and yeah. it's incredible. Jamie came out with, um, for something to eat with us. We went to Frankie and mm. Benny's, and he yeah. did it there. And literally, the whole of Frankie and Benny's in Ashford stopped. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, if you've ever been to a Frankie and Benny's, you know that they have music playing loudly. Yeah. If there's people in there that are for birthdays or anniversaries, oh God, yeah. uh, that's a big thing. They have all of the, the the sounds and the lights going off and the music going off. Um, but it literally ground to a halt mm. because. Jamie got up and he did the, the routine uh, with one of our club members and and you could see people were kind of, what's going on there? Mm -hmm. And people were physically getting up from their seats and sort yeah. of edging over. The waitresses stopped. Everything literally came to a standstill yeah. whilst they watched Jamie do this routine. And it, it, was, it was amazing to watch. It really was. Uh, so this is um, kind of a step, I would say it's a more in the mix. It's more in depth. Um, I would say you get like 25 or something downloads in here. Yeah. But this is kind of more, how do I put it? Um, it's, a, it's a progression, isn't it? It's, yeah. a, it's the next move on yeah, from, that's a, yeah. from a, a kind of a basic routine. Yeah. Um, so it allows you to, because a lot of the time when you do it, if you start doing a PK touch routine, uh, you'll notice that the people who are getting touched for real yeah. are then, oh, can I be the one who... Yeah. doesn't get touched yeah um, and this is a great way to do it to them and obviously you can record it yeah uh honestly it's so funny but should we check out the trailer because i think so yeah let's check out the trailer yeah. for uh d'angelo's touch keith barry here Raphael has just shown me his new pk touch routine d'angelo i'm telling you now it's my go-to pk touch routine and it is going into my next live show after the magic madhouse just seen the most amazing version of touches that I've ever seen. This was funny, it's doable, it becomes something theatrical as well. You could literally end with a boo. Grazie. <laughs> 
We all have PK touches, Banachek's beautiful, fantastic effect, I've used it, everybody's used it. To see it done in a new way, a new technique, a new approach, rethinking the whole thing, gets rid of some of the kinks and the drawbacks, makes it a great performance piece that can work anywhere with anyone. Fantastic, beautiful mentals and beautiful magic that anybody can enjoy. Love seeing it. I, I didn't know what was going on, but it fooled me. Uh, not that that says much. So this is a fantastic new take on an old classic, and I think it will breathe new life into it. Uh, well, worth, well worth studying and, and finding out about. Great performance piece. That's great, it, it really is. Um, one of the things that I was going to say, and I'm not as familiar with um, these type of routines mm. as, as I really would like to be because I think they're fascinating, I think they're, they're great. Um, one other thing to, uh, just to say, you mentioned Banachek. Uh, we also have a, a great little booklet that has been added to the site recently called uh, Shivers, mm. um, which uh, is from Ace Magic Studios. That's worth checking out, certainly, because it's an expanded version of a, of a book um, that was out uh, quite a few years ago. Um, and there's some quite nice basic routines in there if you're still a little bit unsure and you want to get a little bit more into it. So certainly check out Shivers, check out mm. um, the Banachek uh, PK Touches book. And this certainly, I mean, when we first got this in, uh, even before we saw Jamie perform it, uh, there was a lot of buzz about mm. this um, on various forums, such as the Magic Cafe on Facebook, yep. and customers that were literally calling in and saying, have you got D'Angelo's Touch? I've been told by friends at the uh, Magic Club that I've got to get this book. I've just seen him use it, and it's amazing. Mm. Um, and like I said, yeah, because you get loads of downloads, if you're someone who can't um, learn as easy from reading it, there are like 20 downloads or whatever I said earlier yeah um, which is incredible but yeah it's a it's a great thing obviously you don't need anything I don't think in any of these you need any other objects apart from yourself mm -hmm. um, which is which is good and it's, it's good because I know I've always got that on me do you know what I mean I know I've always got that in my repertoire so if someone says oh can you show me something and I haven't got cards or uh, I've just done a card trick and show me something else. You can immediately go into that, and it is a lot bigger. Than, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Then, uh, yeah, no, that's that's fair enough. That's great, Harry. That's, Lovely. That's really good. But yeah, make sure you check it out, um, and then I'll, I'll learn it. And I'll put a video up soon on the Alex Sam Instagram. Good man. Good man. Lovely. So. Mm. Yeah, so I, I I'll be totally honest. Um, I, in the whole time that I've been performing weddings, um, I I had a bit of a difficult time choosing what I what oh. I would do. Um, so it, it really came down to the effect that I thought I, I would probably do or probably have done the, the most. Okay. Um, before we look at that particular effect, um, you know, it's an interesting thing knowing about what people do for couples at a wedding. Mm. After all, it is their special day. Yeah. Um, and you don't really want to get into that sort of situation, I don't think, where um, too much is going on for them because they've got enough going on anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, and I'm sure you'll find, and I've certainly found, that sometimes you go to weddings and the, the bride and groom will literally say to you, uh, we booked you for a wedding, but don't worry if we don't get to, to see you. Um, yeah. You know, you kind of hear for the guests. Yeah, because they've got other things. So. Because they're going to be dragged off to places for photos, yeah. they're going to be um, mingling with people, and you can bet your life, as soon as you go over to start doing some magic for them, someone's going to come over and they're going to go, oh, congratulations, and then that's kind of lost a little bit. It doesn't happen all the time, but mm. it, it can happen, um, which is fair enough. Um, and uh, and obviously there are those moments where you are performing for the, the bride and groom. Yeah. Um, so it, it, the reason I found it difficult is because I kind of gauge what would be the best trick for them at the time. Right. So uh, I've had it before where the bride and groom have said, oh, we haven't seen any magic, can you show us some magic? And then all of a sudden, um, and that's when they've been standing up maybe in like a cocktail reception, and all of a sudden you get a group of another like 10 people gather around. So now you're thinking, I, I'm doing a close-up trip with them, which is great. People can still see it, but does this need to play a little bit bigger? Mm. Um, so I, I kind of have something for that. Uh, so I tend to gauge what I'm going to do depending on the situation. Mm. If I'm honest, um, I don't tend to do... Uh, when, I, when I perform the cups and balls at any function, it's kind of my callback effect. Right. So I, I always say... Um, it, thanks very much for seeing whatever they've seen previously and then I say, oh, you know, uh, I'll tell you what, I'll come back and see you for a little bit and we'll do something special and then 
if I feel the dynamic of the table is right, I'll come back and do the cups and balls. Um, but if I'm at a wedding, that is the trick that I think I would do for the bride and groom. Yeah. The thing is, it is it is bigger. It is bigger, yeah. And and the thing is, as well, is that, you know, you pass the wand over, mm. you know, and you can have a lot of um, mm. by play with, oh, that's who's in control. That's obviously you. You take mm. hold of that. You're in charge of that. Don't yeah. pass it over to him because, you know, if he yeah. uses it, anything's going to happen. Um, and then you go into the cups and balls routine. Um, so I have I have used that quite extensively. Um, I also use uh, something, uh, I also use the Bitbook, believe it or not, um, because anybody that owns Bitbook will know that on there there's a routine that I, I filmed for it, um, which uses the baby gag. Um, so I kind of use that uh, in there to do a little bit of pre-show um, and I use the baby gag. And that, I've used that before, mm. especially if I need to play that a little bit bigger. Um, yeah. I think, um, not obviously this isn't always, but a good thing to keep in mind is having a weird kind of, uh, a weird feature of a trick. So with cups and balls, you've got the noise of banging the cups. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I think that's good. With pico touch, you've got the distance between. Yeah, and that, that brings me, that brings me actually really well into the, the point I was going to make. Out of all of the effects that I, I tend to do, uh, the, whatever I choose, um, I, I try, try to make, um, obviously entertaining, but I also try and make it an emotional hook. Mm. And the thing is, is that Harry's, uh, de- the, the touch routine, the PK touch routine, um, it's, it has a, a, like a, not only a physical reaction, but an emotional connection as well. Yeah. And um, I think if you, if you take any magic trick uh, within reason, you can make that emotional connection between the two people. Um, there are a couple of other routines that I would do as well. Uh, I would do the linking finger rings. Yeah, very good. Um, purely because, you know, the rings are there to, to, yeah. to do. Um, I like the concept of, of that, certainly. Um, there is also another effect that I would do without um, hesitation if the mood is right and providing I've not broken the gimmick in the meantime, um, which appears uh, in this book. Um, no, you have to forgive me because oh, this a is cool a book. yeah. This is this is actually a faded copy because I've had this. This is an original copy. I've had this for years. Uh, in Gary Kurtz's Unexplainable Acts, there is a, a an effect called attraction, uh, and I think it's ideally suited for uh, for weddings uh, and even like wedding anniversaries that sort of thing. Anywhere where there's a couple, mm-hmm. uh, I haven't got the effect of them today purely because um, I broke the gimmick last night. Uh, so you do have to be careful with that. But imagine this, uh, you borrow the two uh, wedding rings. Yeah. Yeah. You place them onto a pencil. Uh, the bride holds onto one end, the groom holds onto a, at the other end. And as you do this, the rings move together oh. along the pencil. That's good. Yeah. Um, you can have them move to the center or you can have the, uh, the, the uh, wedding ring at this end and the wedding ring at this end and then have it moved uh, move nice. like to long to join, but if they come together in the middle, that's that's a nice image. But again, yeah, that's a that's a weird thing. Do you know what I mean? Where there's two people holding a pencil exactly or one, whatever. It is. Yeah, exactly. And you get this, you get this emotional connection. You yeah. get this a lovely emotional connection. Uh, so it is now a piece of of magic that is out of your hands because the connection between the two of them through the pencil yeah. is what is what makes. The, the rings uh, nice. travel together. So if they was to want to get that, where could they get that from? Is that uh, okay? So um, Unexplainable Acts, as far as I'm aware, that was republished a few years back. So this is, uh, oh. as far as I'm aware, still available on Murphy's. Uh, it'll be a black cover though, rather than the orange cover. That's a nice cover though, I like that one. Um, but then, I mean, there's some great stuff in the book, mm. regardless of uh, attraction that I've just seen. But attraction is the, as an effect that I, I would certainly look at. But the one that I go to more than anything else um, is anniversary walls purely because uh, out of all of the tricks that are out there and I know lots of magicians do this effect out of all of the tricks out there to my mind that is still one of the most impossible mm. uh, things that you can do with a card uh, I'll be honest I do two different versions of anniversary walls uh, the one uh, by Doc Eason I love I think that is more impossible uh, purely because of the impossible object that you end up with at the end. Uh, but 
if I wanted to do it um, because I hadn't planned to do one of the other tricks that I've already mentioned or something different, then what I also do um, is an effect called Hula Fusion, uh, which is in this book, which is Magic from Maui by Carl Andrews. Uh, this is one book that I think lots of people uh, have not heard of before. Um, I believe you can still get them. If you can't, then um, I think you put out a video as well. There's, t again, tons of great mm -hmm. stuff in here, but Huda Fusion is brilliant. And the reason it's brilliant is because it's in an impromptu version of Anniversary Waltz. Oh, I see. So you still get an impossible object at the end. Maybe not as, impos as yeah, impossible but... as the original. Uh, where you end up with two cards face to uh, that are back to back as such, um, but it's still a, a a version that I love very much. So um, don't take my word for it. Uh, we're going to go to a performance now of me performing Hula Fusion. Harry, thank you for joining me. Thank you for joining me, Claire. Um, now I know. All right. <laughs> I know uh, that you two have known each other for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have. Okay. Um, in fact, ever since you were born. Mm -hmm. It's fair to say. Bloody hell. Yeah. yeah. Got some stories. <laughs> oh, you have. I bet you have. You better zip it, you. They will be the of another <laughs> vlog. We're going to try something strange, right? And I I can guarantee to, to the both of you mm -hmm. that there is not one like this anywhere else in the world. All right, mm -hmm. uh, you'll get to know what I mean oh. by that in just a second. Uh, do you want to take all of those for me? Yeah. If you don't mind taking all of those. Yeah. Uh, now, just give them a, the best shuffle that you can. Uh, you don't have to do anything fancy. Oh, you're not. I okay. Um, that's, that's fine. Very good. I'll take your half, Claire. Mm -hmm. I'll take your. F oh, all right. Show off. Okay. You see that? Uh, I too so will bad. do something uh, flush as well, and we will give them a few cuts. So I do need someone to select a card. Now, do you want to select a card, or do you want to select a card? I'll select a card. <laughs> See? <Favorite>. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> didn't even get a choice, right. did you? Um, what I'm going to ask you to do uh, for me, Claire, is reach in and take out a card, mm. all right? But try and take out a card that's got a lot of, um, so not a picture card. That would help, mm -hmm. all right? So if you just reach in and take out a card for me, it doesn't matter if I see it. Oh. There, diamonds. Yeah. Brilliant. And if you could just pop your autograph nice and big across the uh, face of there for me. Are you signing your life away? She might as well be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. that's very good. Uh, excuse me a second. That's nice. That's nice. It's a nice pen, isn't it? Okay. Um, you just take all that. So we now have Claire. Claire just on, on here. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, actually, I handed that to oh. you, but you actually need that. Um, so Claire's autograph is just on there. This is a magic wand. Okay. All right. So we're just going to take Claire's uh, card and leave it about halfway down into the pack. All I need you to do is uh, just use the magic wand to tap the top. Very good. Actually, I don't think she has the power. Do you want to do that? Get right. Yeah, of course I do. See if you had the power. And how did we do? Oh, yeah. Ouch. See, look. That is... <laughs> yeah, okay, look. I'll tell you what. We'll try it again. I'm going to leave that somewhere in here. Remember, nothing happened for the second. Do you want to just pop that? That's there you go. Over. You got it this time, Claire. This is the easiest She one. actually really physically hit that. This is the easiest Oh, one. it worked. No, it did hey. work. No, it did work. No, I'll tell you what, I don't actually need your card uh, for the moment, so we will leave that uh, someone down in here. Um, in fact, I'll give these a shuffle up. Um, do you want to pass the uh, wand over? It, it, double function, you see, the wand and the pen. Uh, let's just give those a, a mix up. Um, in fact, you could help me out with this. Uh, I'm going to shuffle up the cards, and uh, you shut up, stop wherever you want. Stop. There, okay, uncut the pen for me. Um, and uh, Queen of Diamonds, mm -hmm. okay, that's that's your card. So, uh, well, you signed the face of the one before, didn't mm -hmm. you? Okay, um, and I asked you to choose one that didn't have, a face. Uh, which wasn't a court card, but um, this was uh, done at random. So, I'll tell you what, um, could you just, uh, why don't you write your name on the back? Of course, of course, I can. Try not to get any on my finger. <laughs> oh, he did, a, he did a little heart as well. Um, so look, we have um, Harry's um, Queen of Diamonds. Did you recap the pen? Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Um, and we will leave that. Uh, well, I tell you what, somewhere in the in the middle there. Okay. Um, I said it was a magic wand. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, if you tap now and that came to the top, you'd see it arrive because it's it's right, right in there on the back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You want me to do yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, please. Very good. 
Nothing. Any magic words for that? No. Ale- uh, no. Uh, you were going to say Alakazam, weren't you? Yeah. Right. <laughs> I should have you are being paid to say that. <laughs> <I am. laughs> yeah. Just have it, Just have it again. Alakazam. Useless. Barbie. It's right. Useless. It's, it's, it's fine because I because you autographed it on the back. At least it'll be easy to find. Out of, ah, there we go. That's cool. Um, that's good. So here we have Harry, Harry's autograph. I did say there probably is a connection between the two of you. When you tapped, um, what you actually did is you actually found Claire's card. So this is Claire's card because it has her name on it, and that short card because it's got your oh, sorry your name on the back. Okay. Um, I tell you what, could you do me a favour? Could you just hold out your hand for me? That's it. Um, I'll just bring it a little bit more this way, and what I will do is I will put these uh, let's see back to back. Yeah. And um, do you want to put your hands on top? Ah, uh, dearly I'm beloved. Touching, touching we are gathered here today. Did you know that I actually uh, I can conduct weddings? Can you? Oh. No, that's a lie. Oh. I can't really. Um, break a thousand I did say, millions of girls' hearts in. Uh, that, that, that. There's one card that's face up, there's one card that's face down. Your card was the face up one, I think, the Queen of Diamonds. Yeah. What one do you want me to remove? The face down one or the face up one? Down. Oh, oh go on. Down. Down? Mm. You sure? Mm. Okay. Actually, should we try something more impossible? What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this one, the face up one, just purely because you can see that straight away. Mm. Right? Would it amaze you if I can make this card vanish and reappear there? Mm. Watch. Actually, that would amaze me. Mm. Right? It would amaze me. I can't do that. Like, oh, I can God. get. I can kind of get halfway there though. Watch. What I can do is I can remove Harry's mm. autograph. Cool. I didn't say where I'd put it. It's actually floating around here in the air at the moment. Let me just take that and just. Sprinkle it over here. Now, if I've done Sprinkle, that correctly, that so lift cool. up your hand. Oh, I'm glad you did that. It's getting very sweaty. I'm yeah, I'm, I'm there is now one card. There is now one card that has an autograph on the back, and no. that is on the back of your card. Oh, there. very good. Bosh. Just like that. Like and I did that. say that there'd be one nowhere like this in the world. Um, so um, I know that you live in separate houses. So you know, oh. if you can put oh. them back together again, let me know because yeah. that, that'd be a great trick. It really would. Cool. Um, thank That's you, Harry. Really thank good. you. High five, Claire. Love Very good. that. And that is Hula Fusion from Magic from Maui. So that's Hula Fusion. Nice. So, but you can see that it's got this emotional attachment. Mm. It's got this thing, you know, this premise that you've set up that you're then going to go uh, into um, and they, they can walk away with it at the end with a, a souvenir and they will talk about it. That's the, the whole point. Yeah. Um, so it's suitable for, for wedding, certainly because it's for a couple. Um, if I had the choice, then I would do, uh, and I decided to do that a trick, uh, that particular trick, I would do the original anniversary walks but if this was a spur of the moment thing and I thought well actually I'm going to finish with this then I would finish with Hula Fusion nice um, so it's just a, a couple of things I guess you know if, between us here what we've basically said to you is when you're looking at wedding magic look for something that makes a connection yeah yeah makes a connection with people everybody lots of people can do tricks at weddings mm. lots of people do magic tricks at weddings but you want people all going away going yeah, wow, you know, and making them feel special. Um, and if you can do that with a trick or leave them with something that makes them feel that, then they're brilliant. I've got, right, I'm just going to say this right now, I've actually got the best wedding trick that's ever been released, I think. And I'm not going to say anything about it. Ah. <laughs> there we are. Yeah, there we go. That's fair enough. I'll tell you about it. Oh, oh, you'll tell me about I it. I can't tell you guys, honestly. But this is the thing, yeah? Everything's personal to you guys out there. So have a look at the material. Mm. Have a look at it and think, what would I do at a wedding? If I was to do this for the couple, mm. for you know the bride and groom at a wedding, what would I do? And I would say put effort in. Put effort in learning something for bride and grooms because yeah. it is their special day. They're, they're trusting you with entertaining people at the probably, well, depends if they get along. But probably the best day of their life. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, that, that's so, it. You know, and if you can make an emo- emotional connection with mm-hmm. them for a, for a magic trick, then then so yeah. be it. And I feel like you do you get a lot more than just um, oh, oh oh thank you from a bride and groom. Do you know what I mean? If you do make the yeah. connection, then yeah. It's- on Lovely. the back of that, uh, and just before we finish up this set, the segment, check out Michael Vincent's new TED Talk uh, on uh, YouTube. Uh, if you've not seen it already, um, it's a great uh, bit uh, that Michael does on a, on a TED Talk, uh, which is about communication and connecting with people um, and changing perceptions and uh, 
the thing is about perception, but changing perceptions. Uh, it's very interesting, and it might just make you think a little bit more about some of the magic that you perform mm. to people. So nice. That's it. So thank you for joining us uh, on uh, the um, Harry versus Andy challenge. Yeah, uh, and we'll see more of that again next mm. week. Oh, also. Make sure you send some bits in as well. Email in some Andy vs. Harry challenges. Yes. This I like this one, you know, because it's uh, it opens doors to a lot of a yeah. lot of stuff. Yeah, I'll be totally honest. Um, it's been we haven't had a lot of uh, people sending them in recently, so yeah. please send them in. Uh, we haven't got one. Uh, just think about it. We haven't picked one today for next week because we're still waiting for some more to come in. Mm. So um, what we'll do is we will get people to send them in. You know, see this, send them in, and then um, hopefully we'll have one mm. uh, to perform next week. But yeah. we'll keep that as a surprise uh, so much we yeah. know it. Also, if you've got like a, I would I'd think of it like this, use this as like a, a learning tool. Yeah. So if you've got anything coming up that you're not sure about, then maybe say, oh, can you do something to do with this? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Maybe you've got a gig at a zoo, can you do a trick related to animals? Yeah, don't yeah. worry about it. Yeah. Might give you some ideas, do you know what I mean? We're, we're here for you. Absolutely yeah. correct. Yeah. <laughs> so, right, last... Last two week. things. Oh, last two things. So, uh, coming up in uh, two weeks' time, uh, the 11th and 12th of uh, September, we have From the Card Table to the Magic World, uh, an uh, Alakazam Academy with Jan Hardy. Oh. Now, um, I had the pleasure of uh, starting to speak to Jan uh, a couple of years back. Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, Jan is a reformed card cheat. Um, and he is the real deal as well as a reform card cheat and he uh, now uh, consults for casinos and he performs magic so what he has learned at the card table uh, with regards to moves and timing and deception and misdirection uh, he's now applied to to magic uh, and like I said he consults for casinos as well so very excited about that I'll be hosting the two-day course um, so I am well looking forward to that um, because he talking to him he's got some fresh new ideas but he's also taken some classic plots mm. streamlined them and kind of uh, used some moves that are maybe not familiar to magicians so much in with these in with these tricks it's got a wicked version of the build biddle trick which is certainly what I know Andy's out. excited because he's doing it so excited I am I'm doing this like yeah. a little yeah so um, that is the 11th and 12th of September um, so check it out on our site um, before we leave you today we will leave you with the with the trailer yep. um, but yeah get in there get in there quick it's like an early bird price so that would be great for the two days and uh, yeah it'll be loads of fun you'll learn mm. loads Love it. Yeah. Love it. I'm excited for that one. We had a, it seems like we haven't had an academy in ages. Since the summer school. Yes, yeah, since the summer school. So we've got Jan Hardy that is um, coming up soon. Uh, and we have got another academy that is booked for the end of September, uh, which is a coin magician. I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, but we will give you more details of that probably next week. Yeah. You little... Well... You little cheeky boy. What can I say? Um, right, what are we going to... Well, I thought we would end on a big bang before we go to the trailer for Ian Hardy's Academy. What, the effect big bang? No, no. It's a good one, though. This lovely thing here. This is Fake Genius by oh. Steve Cook. Uh, wow, 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 is all I will say. It's the best front cover. I'd buy it just for that front cover. Hey, do you know what? I had a look at, like, look at that picture. Look at that picture. He's one suave guy, isn't he? He's suave. Um, so, I... I love my books. I really do love my books. And um, I, Steve was kind enough uh, to give us each a copy of, of Fake yeah. Genius, uh, autographed, I should say. Uh, and I have only literally started uh, scratching the surface of this mm. book. I'm, I'm only a few pages in. Um, but you know what? The man's a genius. He really is a genius. Uh, there's no other way of describing it. Um, anybody that has seen previous things like Symbol, uh, ID, uh, Diabolical, uh, there's just, uh, yeah. the, the thinking is just crazy, it really is. And, uh, you know, Steve is such a humble guy, he's such a humble mm. guy, such a nice guy. And, you know, you, you look at him and you think, wow, I, you know, <laughs> You know, yeah. I, this is I mean, Andy right now. Lots yeah, of this words. is this is this is what this is what I mean by that, right? Sometimes you'll be fooled by something that a magician does, and through no fault of their own, there's kind of like a, <laughs> I I fooled you. Yeah. Steve is so unassuming. You know, he'll fool you, but.
but it, it will be such a uh, such a, a humbling thing for him. He won't, you know, there'll be no smugness mm. there or anything. Yeah. And it, it's one of those moments because we all like being fooled, right? Yeah. But sometimes, and you guys can sympathise with this being at conventions, and we, we've experienced it before. You're fooled by something, but you get this instinctive impression that the the person that's doing it, you know, they're taking great pleasure in doing yeah. that. I feel um, like he's like a teacher. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. He wants you to learn these things, it seems like. Yeah, uh, and he uh, and this is the thing, you're right. He, he is very much a teacher. He's encouraging you mm. to, to be creative, to kind of to kind of think about the, the effect. Um, one of the things he's great for is that we'll you know, he'll come into the shop or I'll see him at a convention or he'll email or send a video and um, he'll he'll do the effect, you'll be fooled badly by it. But he won't. But then what will happen is he'll say, "What? What do you? What do you think?" And you'll you'll give a couple of suggestions mm. or maybe some feedback, and he'll go. He'll he'll coach you to try and work out the method, but think about what a method yeah. can be. Yeah. You know, and that's great. You know, because I think it's it's we could all go. Oh yeah, that's that's that move or that's yeah. that principle at work there but it's kind of understanding why you've used that why you use that move why you use that application and that's what steve is all about this is the not only the hows but the whys yeah you know this is why we've gone this way um and i i love it um there's an effect in here um which i've forgotten the name of temporarily uh, and there's a great effect in here called fault Fort- foretold uh, mm-hmm. but there is another one um that i thought would I think he's brilliant, especially Love Locked, uh, especially coming up uh, for um, for Halloween, mm. and especially on the basis of what we talked about today with wedding magic as well. Love Locked is is great. Uh, it's got a great presentation um, uh, about Houdini and, and Bess, so well worth checking out. But seriously, guys, you know if you're not experienced Steve's work before, check out his products but certainly check out this book because so, it's, it's brilliant just it in is. a couple of sentences if people were to get this book mm. what would they gain from it just in a couple of sentences what do you reckon um, insight and the ability to think creatively that's good that uh, that wasn't bad that's was not it? bad yeah, put on the spot there Yoda yeah know. Yoda no that's good I think that's another thing with books is you do get a lot more um, kind of do get a lot more of um, because they you don't see it do you, know I mean? you don't see the full thing as such do you know I mean so you do have to well, not fill in the gaps it, it, well that, I think that's exactly yeah. you do have to fill in the gaps it allows you to interpret it a way that you, you mm. in your mind's eye you feel it should it should be interpreted uh, we're quite lucky when Steve came down he showed us a couple of effects from, from the book um, and some other ideas he was working on because uh, I know he's looking or he's working on Fake Genius too. Uh, but seriously it's, it's a very very good book yeah. uh, they are in limited uh, supply and uh, um, as far as I'm aware, the, the hard copies are a limited run anyway. So as soon as they're out, they're out. So uh, we currently have stocks. Please check them out. I don't think you'll be disappointed. I think this will be an inspiration uh, for years to come. And one book that you're going to constantly refer back yeah. to, um, not only for the tricks, but also you know some of the insights mm. and tips that are given as well. So this is on our site. It's currently in stock. Check it out on our, yeah. Check it out now. I'm going to have a chill day on Sunday, so I reckon I'm going to read that. That's that's a good idea. But is that everything? Oh, that is everything. Sorry. So we've taken a look at Lost for Words, Dan Joe's Touch, Fake Genius, Magic from Maui, and Unexplained Boats by Richard Kaufman and Gary Kurtz. Lovely. That's a hell of a lot. That is that good, really good. So, Harry. Yep. That uh, only leaves me to say thank you very much for joining thank me again. You. Uh, guys, in a moment we're going to run the trailer for Jan Hardy's Academy. But beho- on behalf of myself and Harry, we wish you a fabulous week. And we will see you next time on the Alakazam video blog. Bang, bang. Hi guys, my name is Jan Hardy from France. Join me on September 11th and 12th for a two-day course at Alakazam Live Academy. As you may know, I'm a reformed card sheet working now in the game protection and the magic industry and my goal is to streamline magic effects with techniques from the card table world. Especially for you here in Alakazam Live, I'm going to make an expanded version of my lecture from the card table to the magic world. During this lecture, there will be tricks 
for all levels from beginners to advanced. And for the very first time, my bedless trick and my no looking poker deal. So join us at Alakazam. See you there.